Hi folks and welcome to the critique channel for all those participating in the Howard Jones online art tutorials. Okay, we're starting off with Alison's. This is March um, the 10th, I think it was, our second watercolour lesson of that month. Um, and it was entitled Figures in Action. I think this is a very good, um, very good job. Um, I love the light through here. That's fantastic. It's a nice abstract shape, actually. Figures are good. We didn't have to worry too much about um, diffusing sort of areas like the legs. They, they can be a little bit sort of strong, which they are here. But that's fine because they're sort of sedentary. They're just watching. They're spectating this chap here throwing, playing his um, game of balls. Um, it's good. I like the strength in these figures. I like the playoff between this lovely pale shirt, very summery looking character. And I think there's just enough in other areas. The tonal values appear are excellent underneath the tree line. There's a hint of light at the back there and it cools off. There may be a little bit of muckiness just going through here. That's that's when what's happened here is that the um, shadow from here, from from the from this direction, the shadow has been painted over this area. We've gone back in with a with a weaker mix at this edge. So just be careful of that, Alison. Other than that, that that's a really good, it's a really lovely painting. Let's get uh, let's get these things off the screen here. And I think, who have we got next? Okay, next we've got Bob. So let me just grab a pencil here a minute, Bob. Okay, the first thing that grabs me instantly is... Um, We've lost this canopy that we were meant to create. Trees are just a little bit too far away from us. Really, we were, um, you know, there were trees directly overhead over our, um, meant to be directly overhead. If I just put in a couple of shapes here to indicate the trees up the top and a few tree trunks down here. So these trees were meant to sort of be surrounding our, our figures. So they've just been pushed back a little bit too far, I think, there, Bob. Let's get rid of that a second. Um, yeah, ha had we have had we have done this canopy, this closer canopy of trees, um, we could have played off with probably a cleaner shape to things um, in regards. Sorry, with regards to um, a, a, a sort of larger area, blocked out area here of, of shadow, and then that. And because the trees would have been overhead here, it would have meant that the shadow would have been through here, leaving this area a more a more abstract shape. Um, so we'd have had light through here, whilst the rest of this would have been in shadow. If I just pick, um, <clears throat> excuse me, another colour here for the shadow. So all this area around here would have been in shadow with a nice sandwich of light in the middle. So that, that was the importance of getting the, the canopy overhead. Um, you can just imagine that, the, the, that this would have then been a, 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 an exchange of dark in this area, light in this area here, light, um, sorry, dark there, light here, dark here. So, um, yeah, other than that, let's have a look at it for... Um, the figures are excellent um, and the shadows okay like I said they're a little bit disjointed um, around here and it would have been nice to have seen some more solid bigger shapes I think so yeah try to try to remember that um, that thing about sort of where we go 
light areas, dark areas, warm areas, cool areas. So it would have been sort of dark in the canopy up here, a bit of light through the trees, uh, shadow dark underneath the trees, light on top of our bulls player, and, and then dark cool down here in the foreground for the for, for even, trees that are even closer. I do like those trees, they're, they're, they're very good, and the figures are good too. Okay. So next up here, um, I think there's a bit of a picking up a bit of a trend here, Chris. I think the last time you sent me a um, uh, uh, something for critique, it had this blue tint to it. So can I suggest perhaps you try to um, photograph your work in a different room or a different place? Um, this is obviously effects of either um, artificial interior light or something like this. Uh, so if you want to send me an email regarding that, um, I'll try to um, try to give you some recommendations as to how we might be able to sort of um, change change the look of things. Um, it's a good painting. Let's grab a pencil here. Um, to think about your tonal jumps. Um, if you look at the area behind this figure here, this figure here, okay, um, it's, it's, if you squint your eyes particularly, it's the same tonal value. So it would have been nice to have shown this particular figure off by, um, if you go, if you go, I'll show you what I mean. If you go a little bit darker around this character, so what can we use here? Anything for now. Just dark down here. If you go dark around this figure, imagine the background back there is of a, a, a darker tone. Um, you can see just how much better that would look for showing that, that character off, that figure off there, okay? So try, you know, and, and it always try to play, if you've done it here beautifully, you know, on this figure, that nice dark figure, figure against the light. Um, and I like the way you've given this chap, the fact that you've given this chap a lovely dark beret um, does that job really, really well. So, you know, just be careful of that, Chris. You obviously are aware of it because you've done it here with the with the, the black beret and you've done it here, as mentioned. Um, but for some reason, we sort of overlook this. And, and there's a sense that this character is the second most important character other than the chap that's actually playing balls. I mean, that's a great shape too. That's a nice action. Uh, there's a nice bit of action in that figure there. Um, on to other things. I love the trees. Trees are fantastic. Nicely sort of overhead, creating that warm, dark, cool light. Uh, you could have done with a little bit more shadow through here, through the mid-ground, and bulked out the, the shadow in, in here, a bit more of the shadow in here. And um, it, sometimes I think we're sort of afraid to do things that are, we feel as though they'd be overstated, that it would be, it, no, I can't do that, it's too obvious. Now do the obvious, always lean towards the obvious. Um, that's the best way to, to, to be thinking when you're... Um, when you're plotting and planning out your your lights, um, your lights and your darks, and your your tonal contrast and your colours, always think, you know, go bold, go do the obvious first. Um, but that's good, yeah, yeah. There's a lot in that I really like. So bear in mind what I mentioned. So just moving on again to who have we got next? This is Claire. It's interesting, isn't it? The difference between, um, what have we looked at now? Four paintings here. Um, this is very, this is a very clean looking painting. Um, and I mean that, by that I mean, sorry, um, there's a lot of hard edge. There's a lot of painting on dry paper. Um, so you might want to start doing some exercises where you're working on wet in a little bit more wet in wet. You know, every edge. Let me just grab a pencil a second. I'll show you. Um, every edge we look at here um, is hard. Hard edges to both sides of these trees. Hard edges here. Hard edges up the sides of our figures. Very hard edges up the side of these these figures. 
uh, hard edges around this tree here and these trees so I think I think I've made my point there but um, so hard edges around these figures and this figure here it's it's it what's happening is um, it's nearly all painting on dry paper so this could be for a couple of reasons um, it could be the speed at which you paint it could be that you're not putting down a big enough wet enough wash in the first place which renders the paper damp um, if you're not if you if your initial washes are uh, not covering the paper uh, um, in a very wet manner you know in other words a lot lot of water in the brush um, what's happening then is that the paper will obviously dry out very quickly and it is the result then that you are working on dry paper so my um, recommendation Claire is to start working um, on uh, a wetter paper leave your big washes the initial washes really wet and before they get a chance to dry out um, start working some of those shapes obviously not all of your shapes need to be wet on damp or um, some of that work is definitely going to need to be wet on dry you know and you're quite right in a way to sort of think of those wet on dry shapes to be your closest figures but perhaps more importantly um, the, for the um, for the main characters and I would say that our focal point really is these three here the two guys stood up and the one chap throwing his um, his ball so yes hard edges around there wet on dry in that area in that area there but elsewhere I, I think there's a lack of um, wet in wet or wet in damp that's one of the hardest things we have to learn as watercolorists um, particularly for the loose style watercolorist um, so start practicing uh, that that particular technique it, it, it's just you know from looking at this I it's evident that it's a technique that I think you you should exercise a little bit more if I may be so bold so hope that um, helps Alison lovely painting other than that you know it's um it, it, it's it's bright it's colorful um, but it's just a little static because of the amount of hard edges okay and next we have Denise okay let's have a look at this and um, this is really lively this is this is lovely um, uh, you know the tree the, there's so much texture in those trees it's really really given us some movement back there I can see a strong sort of diagonal movement here great I mean this is what I was talking about earlier it's so good to see the you know I call it the obvious in some respects where we have a sandwich of light in between dark um, so we've done a, a grand job of creating the contrast between dark light dark here um, now what's happened is um, the uh, probably the same brush has been used if you look at an average shape that's been made with the brush back here in the trees it's perfect for the trees the, sh the shape and direction of that brush stroke here and size more importantly of the brushwork in in this tree area is perfect for that distance and for that particular object but when we get to the foreground exactly the same size brush mark has been used to make up the foreground whereas this be, should have been um, uh, a much bigger brush and you would just go through here with the amount of brush strokes you could actually count on one hand um, so that's 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 the most obvious situation here the figures are okay um, the on, on my screen this image is a little bit small um, but the figures look okay you may have a slightly large too large a head on this character here um, you've got to be a little bit careful with that um, excellent uh, f figure in action here um, who's the sort of star of the show overall that's lovely I just like the vibrancy of it so it's a really nice well rendered painting yeah good good work Let me just clean that up so 
come back and clean that up in a bit. Okay, and next we have Hillary. Oh, this is lovely. This is lovely, Hillary. Um, yeah, it's just just the subtlety of this. This is this is interesting, actually. I find this very interesting because we've got some quite neutralised colours here. Our um, and yet it doesn't lack anything for it. In other words, we've sort of taken a lot of the colour saturation from from uh, from from the paint. Um, if you look at areas here and here, the crossover between a bit of warmth here. And the cool shadows here on the underside of the trees. Um, I really like that. Um, it works because the overall balance of tone and colour temperature is is um, is constant. It's consistent, and that that's 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 what makes the difference. Sometimes if we um, if we go in sort of quite heavy in one area, say the canopy the canopy of the trees, or uh, in this sort of subtle manner and then come down to another area somewhere and go really bold and strong and the colors are too bright then there appears to be an imbalance to the painting but this has been kept consistent throughout consistency accounts for um a lot trust me um the figures are fantastic the figures are really really good you know you could say well maybe the the, the canopy the trees could couple up a little bit more maybe um so let me just sort of grab a a, a color here you, you could sort of argue that they're a little bit isolated there's one tree here clearly defined another tree here clearly defined another one there clearly defined another couple of trees here clearly defined whereas had they have cascaded towards each other this one going that way this one going that way this one going that way a little bit this this tree here going that way a little bit that it would it just it would have just sort of coupled it up uh, a little bit and kept the movement going up there um but that's you know that's a not a big issue and it's one that's easily uh, resolved that's a nice painting that's a lovely painting and, al and although there is a bit of um, wet on dry brush here um, and maybe we could have reduced those uh, foreground shadows a little bit um, uh, despite that again it's all in balance so there's some softening off there's wet in wet going on up here in the trees yeah that's a really good painting Hillary thank you well done Okay. Okay, we have um, John's painting, and I like the warmth in this. John, just grabbing a pencil to see where we can highlight. Figures are good. There's a sort of sense, I'm trying to work out why, I think it might be the angle of the photo, to be honest. If we look at the, um, the photo's been taken slightly, the, 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 the lens of the camera has obviously not been quite flat to the plane of the paper, of the painting. So I think, and that, what's, what that's doing is, um, it's making the scene look like it's going uphill a little bit, like this. So just be a little bit careful with that, John. If you can try and get the camera um, parallel, the lens parallel to the surface of the paper, um, that would help. But this, you know, this is a very good painting. It's beautiful. Uh, it's just the subtlety again of of the warmth up here in the in the tree canopy and the cools down here. It's a nice no nonsense um, economy. Uh, economy of brushwork um, that I like in the foreground just enough emphasis on the trees just grab a pencil a second just grab a color here there's just enough uh, you know it's nice that just one or two of these trees have been popped out a bit stronger than the others and there's a nice softness around this this tree in particular the figures these are fantastic figures I really like these yeah, he's good. All your figures are good, John. Um, 
I like that. I like that. It's a good, nice, sunny painting. Captures the mo captures the moment nicely. Excellent, excellent work. Yeah, just re just remember that pra for a practical issue there. Um, you know, try to sort of take the photo uh, a bit a bit flatter to the um, picture plane. Yeah, really, really lovely painting. Okay. This is good too. This is Liz. Liz's painting. There's a cool dominance and that that playoff up here between between the warmth on the trees, the sunlight hitting the tops of the trees, and the sunlight that we're getting, um, dappled sunlight that we're getting as a result of the trees, the over uh, the canopy of trees, that works beautifully. It's a it's it's a nice playoff. I mean, you know, when we're using warms and cools, um, the the types of cools we use against, you know, the what, the combination I'm trying to say between the warms and the cools. Your choice of blue, in other words, and your choice of warm color can be quite important. And I think Liz, you've 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 chosen really well here because that blue. It looks like it might be a bit of cobalt. It's probably well. It's definitely a bit of ultramarine in there, but I think there might be the addition of something else. Unless there's a slight, uh, again, there's a slight sort of filter on this on this image. Um, but that playoff between your choice of cool color and choice of warm color. I'm assuming this is watered down burnt sienna or raw sienna for the treetops. You could, I mean, the figures, sorry, are, are really, really good. There is a little bit of hard edge around all of them. Um, you know, you could sort of lose the maybe the shoulder here on this character or somewhere. Just got to be really careful of that, folks. It is, um, it, it is um, an issue that pops up a lot. Just how hard an edge we, 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 we keep around our shapes. So just play play some of them off if you can. Um, but 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 other than the hard edges to those shapes, the figures are really good. I think they're. Um, I like this chap here in particular. He looks like he was on his way somewhere and then decided got distracted by this game of balls. So we thought he'd stick around for and watch a couple of minutes of play. Hands in his pocket. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. That that's lovely. Like that a lot. Clean that up. Yeah, it's just just the ed edges you you've got to think about there, Liz. Trees are beautiful. Okay. Now this is on a real angle. Um, this photo. So oh, it's, it's a lovely lovely painting. Um, but yeah, uh, f first of all, um, Linda. Um, think you're doing remarkably well you know you've joined the class quite recently um, I think you're doing incredibly well uh, yeah just have a think about this angle okay um, <clears throat> excuse me just grab a pencil you can see that the camera uh, has uh, it, it's it's just you know the, the, the painting is distorted because of the angle that the camera is to the to the surface of the paper so try to lean over or prop better still prop your um painting up on an angle on a board i don't know put a put a put something behind it a loaf of bread as i used to use all sorts of tricks um just prop it up at an angle it makes it much easier to square up most cameras these days have got a little um square grid in the viewfinder and you can just line that square grid up with the corners of your paper of your painting and you'll find you you know you need to be parallel um uh, uh, the, the the camera lens and the camera the face of the camera needs to be parallel to the face of the painting it makes a big difference for for these um but um what a fantastic what an absolutely lovely painting the spattering up here in the tree line is super really brings those trees to life i can't take my eyes off the trees it's excellent I think you've got to be careful with that those those textures in the background. I know what they're meant to be because, well, after all, I, I did do the demonstration. I should know what they are, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, I know what they're meant to be. Those sort of the inference of, tree, of of shops and things like that. The trouble is, um, it's too 
drier brush mark any inference of something going on in the background there like shops um, would have been should have been done on on wet paper damp paper so the marks don't stand off the paper like they do at the moment because there's always a danger um, I'll we'll go into this more in in, in the coming um, in the coming uh, lessons about texture is just like color and tone it should dissipate it should soften the further away we are from it so you've got to cut down on dry brush work in distance terms, in proximity. If something's more than, and this is just off the top of my head, if something's more than 500 y yards away from us, the viewer, always put yourself in the position of the viewer, um, then those textures, even though they'd be hard if you went up close to them, they'd be coarse textures, like a like a brick wall. You, you, up close, you're gonna put a lot of texture in there, but you need to cut down on texture when it's beyond that certain distance, proximity. Just bear that in mind. Um, I'm going to say the same thing here, Linda. Just be mindful of just how hard the edges are. And again, I think we were mentioning this on Claire's, was it? And maybe John's figures. It, it's about um, hard and soft edges. If you don't know where and when to use hard and soft edges, just think of it this way. The closer an object is to us, generally speaking, it will have more hard edges than soft edges, but it won't have only hard edges. It'll always have some soft edges. Now, when we talk about the focal point, which is, of course, this, this area here, if I just point it out, of course, our, our focal point territory is these guys here, the two stood up and the one playing balls. Um, yeah, you'd expect there to be 70% hard edges around these figures, okay, with just a little bit of softening here and there. But for all the other figures, okay, um, I think the trees are an exception in this painting, actually. They're so lovely. But uh, I would say be careful in the background, on in the in the shops, around the other figures. Um, you really, they should be the other way around. It should be more like 30% soft edges to these figures and only, um, sorry, did, what did I say? 70% uh, soft edges in these figures and only 30% hard edges. So it's, it's how we play with the focal point and how, uh, it, photographers do exactly the same thing. They will use filters and um, certain lenses to keep keep the focal point in, in focus whilst other areas are softened and diffused. But I've got to say, um, Linda, um, you're doing remarkably well. Um, you know, to put this out um, uh, at this stage is, is fantastic. Yeah, well done. Nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, this is good. This is good. Okay, this is Ron's. Um, yeah, this is this is very good indeed, Ron. This this possibly be the loveliest thing I've seen you paint. Um, it's funny actually. Uh, I, it's got it's it's. I've got to be careful because I think you're developing a style. I really do. Um, I could pick up on things like um, I think there was a little bit of a little bit of sort of. The, the, some of these brush strokes don't look as confident as others. You know, if you take the area of trees, wow, that's a fantastic, that entire territory there is wonderful. Um, everything within this envelope here. Um, so, so in a way, have the confidence when you're laying out these other shapes. After all, think of them as no different than what you've done up here in the trees. It's just a big, bold, confident um, three, four, five, six, seven at most shapes with with a single sorry with a, with a, a large brush. Um, but I can't take my eyes off the trees, the figures. Um, this is this is really really good. You, you borderline the head size, a borderline sort of borderline to, uh, uh, too big. Um, but uh, if that became a signature, or sorry, a, a, a part of your style, then I think it would be wrong of me to sort of point you off in a different direction. Um, it's just the action. You can really, you can, you can almost read the, these 
minds that what's going through these guys you know what, what sort of shot is he going to play they're really concentrating on on the man in action here and he holds that out in anticipation of his line of throw oh, that's that's superb um that is really good well then ron Sherry, this is Sherry's work. How bright, how incredibly bright. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to say um, it's wet on dry again. So um, there's a lot of wet on dry here. Um, if you look at the brushwork and the edges, let me just take a different color pen for a moment if you look at the edges of your brush marks they are all hard okay um the the edges of the trees down the sides of the trees there's a very hard edge at the bottom of this this lady's skirt here um it's a very so um this is easily fixed sherry okay but you've got to be mindful of it with every brush stroke you make from start to finish of the painting um it's only in fact it's only the very end of the painting when you want to make sure that your focal point needs to be brought out do you really need to be allowing yourself some hard edges so um forget try, try to get try, try to get your big washes in your early washes in with yes pl plenty of paint but plenty of water so that it keeps this paper that you're working on damp for longer okay now i don't know of course what the um, temperature or the humidity conditions are of the room that you're painting in if you've got central heating on something like this this could could potentially be the the, the reason why you find yourself painting wet on dry so much you might not be deliberately painting wet on dry it's just that the conditions are affecting a dictating it's dry, paper's drying out too quickly so um I think it was Claire that I mentioned this to. I would suggest that you do a couple of very small um, paintings and get used to working, uh, catching that paper while it's still damp. Now, this goes back to what I say about painting quickly. If you if you if you leave, if, if you sort of pause and hesitate with every second um, this is going to sound like it's stressful, but trust me, it's not because the, when you get into the habit of painting quickly, it feels like the most uh, easy, casual thing you can possibly do. It, it's just setting yourself on on hitting the ground running, if you like, and it just feels quite casual after a while when you get used to it. But you um, really need, to, in the early stages particularly, to be working a bit quicker. So a lot of the stuff, a lot of these shapes will have been painted over while the paper was still damp. But other than that, um, yeah, it, it's a, it, I love the, the, the color, color combos you've used through here. It's a good, um, it's good color combinations. I like the reds the popping out against the, uh, the, the purpley blues. It's warmth, cool, light and shade. Again, the shadows have, I don't think it's a big enough brush. That's what it looks like. Um, or you're not, um, we, we need more. You've got a lovely big area here. I don't know whether you can see my cursor dancing around on this paper, but um, you've got a, a, a the, the, the shapes that you've made here are really look like the brush has been pushed quite hard, quite aggressively into the surface of the paper. And that's what I'd like to see more of before you start getting into the smaller shapes that peter out up here. I think you need more of this across more of the foreground. So almost obliterating the immediate foreground from left to right. So that way you'd, you'd create a clearer understanding of uh, a dark foreground, a light midground another sort of dark area underneath those trees um etc etc so you're jumping between light dark light dark light dark cool warm cool warm cool warm 
But um, yeah, so just be, just try to um, either speed up your painting. I mean, some artists who work in um, hot countries, warm countries, use a little atomizer, a little handheld atomizer that sprays very fine water, like a perfume atomizer. Um, and if you think that all your shapes, you should be able to recognize your shapes as soon as they start hard edging. The minute you apply that paint to paper, you should recognize a hard edge as soon as it appears and do something about it. Spray it with a bit of um, light water. It's, 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 it's being mindful of it. It's not difficult to do. It's just being mindful of it when you're actually working, when you're actually painting. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Okay, and now we have uh, Viv's. Super, super. Love the figures. I think, Viv, we've probably had this conversation again. It's uh, once again, there are hard edges around our figures. Um, uh, so I think I'm going to be on a bit of a, a rant over the next couple of lessons, folks. Um, and I'm going to really have to repeat what I've been saying on a few of the others. Uh, think about working quicker. Try to get loose. If if you can't, really can't work any quick, if you feel like it's out of your sort of, you know, it, it's you don't want the challenge of, of working quicker, then I think you've got to do create some other means of doing this. So in other words, perhaps you'd come in once it had dried off, which is virtually instantly by the look of things, um, you'd, you'd come in with a damp brush and you'd just, just grab, a, grab something to show you what I mean here. Um, you, you, you would grab a damp brush and you'd just soften areas out a little bit. Um, so the tonal exchange would jump from the back to the to this from the background to his shoulders you, you'd, you'd have no line there um, you'd have a much paler um, area around some of these these legs but you know as, as far as the eye can see there are hard edges so there doesn't seem to be any um, diffusing as such there is actually I tell a lie that there is a bit there that's a nice exchange this person's um, chest against the tree behind has got the same tonal value about it so there is a that's what creates that's another way of creating a softness if you can match the tonal value of the object to the tonal value that's behind immediately behind that object then that's another way of softening um, edges um, and there is this figure here is rather good, actually. There is a softening here on the front of this shirt. So, um, so yeah, I, I can really see that making the effort there, Viv, on that. But I think that there's, I think maybe because there's a thin black line around this chap's, this chap here, fantastic shape, both of these figures, actually. But I think what makes him look static is having, having, the opportunity you could have left this shirt disappear into the background because the, what's the background a very pale weak wash of raw sienna i think had you not put this little dark line around him that would have been a really nice soft edge where the shirt disappears into the background so i think we, we we're obviously fighting a constant need to see things outlined um but you've got to be so careful of that i did i mentioned these three here but I, I think if you left them as they are, so don't worry about what I said about here in particular, I think these guys are okay because of course they're the focal point, you'd expect the hard edges. But it's when we get to these figures and um, and some of the other edges of, of, of things, the trees are great, the trees are really, really good. We're not doing much wrong folks, trust me. Um, the issues that are, have been brought up in this crit critique um, for all of us I think are are certainly not insurmountable by any means. We've just got to be working, I think, and I'm going to try and help us in that area. I'm going to, it's going to be my mantra over the next couple of lessons. I think we've just got to be more mindful of working a bit more, um, either quicker or finding ways of softening more edges to our, our objects. It's a great, I mean, these figures are, are really, really good. Um, I like they're excellent figures. Yeah, well done, Viv. 
Okay, I think that rounds up our critique for this this event. So I'll see you all at the next one. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. If you want uh, notifications, automatic notifications, as and when I upload new videos, then please remember also just to hit that little bell button. And uh, thanks for watching.